Alrighty, folks, this is the official unboxing of a Truth SS Small Star Reel. Tackle Direct. Got it from Tackle Direct because I had some reward points. And there's a $15 off gift certificate for more reward points. Here we go. The Truth Reel in the bag. They always give you these little bags. I sound like I have experience with these because this is actually my second Truth Reel. And there we go. The Truth S S our word is our guarantee. That's the new truth S S real. So wait. Alrighty folks, what do we have here? We've got on this side, we've got the Daiwa Ryoga 2025 7.4 gear ratio, super mega high speed jig and reel or inshore light tackle and offshore light jigging reel. All right. And then over here, we've got the brand new Truth SS Star Drag Made in America. All made in America. Non-level wind conventional casting reel. Why are these two sitting here next to each other? And I don't like doing reviews. I mean, reviews are one thing and just comparisons are another, but I like to compare. And what I'm going to be doing here is we're going to kind of compare the Daiwa Ryoga to the Truth SS and just give you a little bit of difference in the two because I love both of these. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start off with the Daiwa Ryoga. I have like 10 of these, okay? These to me are some of the bad, most badass reels ever made by Daiwa. I refer to them all the time as the benchmark of Daiwa round reel quality. All right, they've got 12 ball bearings. Everywhere you can tick, stick a ball bearing, this reel has it. It's a push button, of course. Level wind. Machined aluminum. Power handle. Okay, big power hand, nice EVA power handle. All right. And many, many times um, people referred to as Daiwa reels are just over-engineered. Well, they're sort of, when I hear that, I, I, I don't scoff at it. I kind of go, yeah, well, they sort of are. This thing is so smooth and wonderful. Um, over on this side, I'll kind of go through each, just, I've done sort of this before. This real side comes off and there's the centrifugal casting brakes. All right. Inside here. And the side plate, it's sometimes tough to get on there. 
but it is highly machined. It goes on there really nice. Okay. I've got other Daiwa Ryogas, but I chose this one to sort of compare to the truth. That's a metal thumb bar. Everything on this reel ticks. That spool adjustment knob ticks. The drag ticks. Loads and loads of range inside this drag. I think, I'm, I mean, I'm not going to go through every little stat here, but I believe this gives up to somewhere, you know, 17, 15 to 20 pounds of drag. All right. This reel is like a watch, a high dollar watch. Nice thing that is also about this reel. Let me undo this. I've got a leader on here. And when this reel is engaged, I mean that, when that, when you push this button and you go to engage the handle, it is like it snaps into gear. Hear that? I mean, it, it's tough. It's very tough. Now, when the reel, when the drag pays out, you also get a clicking. It also ticks. All right. So this, uh, uh, something like this Daiwa Ryoga that they don't, do not sell in the United States not sold this is not a reel that is sold in the united states they attempted to sell this in the united states sort of a downgraded version it was called the pluton 7.4 gear ratio that is wicked fast folks wicked fast um an oval line guide and there's some special things about that also that that line guide on the back side of it is kind of fanned out, okay? So there's no rough edges and it's just, I mean, almost everything you could think of when it comes to a bait casting type level wind reel has been thought of with the Daiwa Ryoga. It is a gem of a reel. So, Daiwa engineering at its finest, I believe. Yeah, been known to be referred to as over-engineered. All right. So now we come to the truth. The Truth SS. This reel's made in Virginia. Uh, it's 100%. This is a 100% United States of America reel. And let me just show you right off the get-go some of the high points that you just notice the minute you pick it up. Look at the size of that gear case, folks. It literally, the shaft on that gear case points comes all the way and sticks out on this side and you can see the machining marks in this look at the size of that gear case the other thing that you notice right away at least i do just like i do on here on the daiwa ryoga to me a real company that is definitely putting extreme thought into their reels these are all hex head screws in here in the reel here same thing and look at the size of these 
look at the size of these screws. And it's only two. Only two over here. And one over here. Because if you look at this reel, the entire... This, I guess the side plate goes on, right? It goes on here. And the entire base of this reel is all one piece. There's a seam here running down. So the side plate comes off and the base of the reel, the reel seat, and up on this side is all one piece. Look at that reel seat versus there you go that's an attached reel seat okay on the Daiwa Ryoga with these giant rivets here no problem that's standard of the industry right here folks no problem there's no problem with that okay but they're taking it to a different level I don't know if you can see it I'd have to take the reel clamp off Hand engraved, right in there, number 124. Number 124. So this entire base is all one piece. But one thing I have found out on these reels is that this reel, truth reel, will not necessarily fit because of the way the real the real seat is, if you're going to call that a real seat, I mean it is the real seat, being that it's all one piece. Versus that, see how that's got. They both have a cupping to them, but this one is actually on the dial a bit longer. All right. What I have found out is that this reel will not fit on my ugly stick catfish rods with a trigger small reel seat that's a trigger reel seat. This just doesn't fit. And how it doesn't fit is, is if you go ahead and you put this in the reel seat, you put it in one uh, end and you go to screw down the other, this ends up sticking up and it won't grab. So this reel must go on a regular straight reel seat, at least of all the rods that I have. Here's the other screw on this side. Look at the end of the handle. We don't have these nuts, like on here, standard of the industry, basically, the nut, all right, that goes on to hold it. This thing is bolted on with a hex head, damn big giant bolt type of thing. Same thing here on, ah, that is usually kind of stiff right in the beginning here, of course, until you start using it. Got a hex headed type Allen screw deal going on there also. Machined power handle. Look at the thickness of this handle folks look at the thickness of this okay there's the difference light tackle monster fish this handle is just beefy monstrous look at the back side of this the back side of the handle look at the size of that okay Look at the size of this. Small monstrosity. That's sort of the difference. That's the reason why I have these, these Truth SS reels. Super light tackle inshore. Maybe a little light offshore. Yes, I've used these for jigging on a reef. Haven't caught anything too huge, you know, some snapper and a barracuda and stuff like that. Okay, but this, look at the star drag. There's the comparisons of the star drag. Look how this one has 
finger fit sort of knobs in it. All right. So when you're fighting a fish, your finger fits right in there and you can tighten it up. Okay. Go like this. Tighten that up. Tighten that up. All right. There is, from what I experienced on my, uh, my first truth reel, is again huge range on this drag but being that i'm used to these i thought that maybe if this ticked and had some tick, 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 as you as you tightened it it might be better but it's not a necessity okay it's a jazzy necessity it has it always on the Daiwa Ryogas, right? Has it on the Daiwa Ryogas. Just exquisitely built. Simple. This is, you know, screaming, I'm an American. We build them, we build it this way. There is your spool tension knob. Here's your clicker right here. And it's plenty loud. I know there's that little section of people out there on every YouTube video. Hey man, how, how loud the clicker? Well, clicker's plenty loud. This spool is sitting on ceramic ball bearings. Right from the factory. I don't I I can't come up with the words really to describe the difference between this and this. I know these are over engineered. This is engineered in a whole different way. Alright. I mean there's a very short throw on this on this knob here. Very short throw. If you look closely underneath here, there's a washer. All right. If you look closely, this runs on a washer. And that, and that, and that, and that, and maybe even this one, are all aluminum. They're, it's... Or this one looks stainless and this one looks stainless and that one looks aluminum and these two look aluminum but they don't you know they're not big into doing the dissimilar metals thing all right and as an aluminum boat owner i know all about a product called tef gel and that is what's all over that screw right there Tef gel. Tef gel is not only a nut and bolt lubricant, but it is a it is a gel type paste um, that keeps corrosion from locking down dissimilar metals. All right, I use it all over my aluminum boat when I'm putting in a pole holder. Or something that's what's all over that I use it all the time I buy it in a tub all right and that's what's all inside here is they use Tef gel they're smart enough to use Tef gel that is the deal they're smart enough they know their materials So that's the first sort of look. I've fished it and this is so easily cupped right here. And I'm out on these charters and I've got this with me on a, I've got one of these reels with me on a Shimano Therese heavy action rod. But do I get the chance to actually catch myself a shark and put this through the paces? Not yet. Not yet. 
There you go. No, no straight slot or goofy crap here. They're using, again, hex head type screws. Now I got to get myself another Shimano Terez to match this because you put this on a Shimano Terez and my God, you got a lightweight monster fish um, outfit combination. I've seen these reels broken down. You can break this entire, uh, I think it was the lever wine or not the lever wine. I mean the lever drag. I think this thing was broke down and they could put it together in absolute minutes. Minutes. These reels are so simple. So that's the truth reel. Kind of compared to the Daiwa Ryoga. Which many people feel that Daiwa is almost over-engineered. I don't know if that's a bad thing. But this is engineered in a whole different way. I hope you got a good look at the truth ss there's not a ton about them but i promised a little comparison video here of the difference between the two a few weeks ago so here you go